welcome to the Training Industry Podcast, the most trusted source of information on the business of learning. Welcome to the first Training Industry Podcast. I'm Taryn H., editor of trainingindustry.com, and my co-host is Scott Rutherford, our director of marketing. Hello. Our inaugural guest is Dr. Amy DuVernay. She's our director of certification programs here. Amy, thanks for stopping by and talking to us today. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, So to kick off, um, can you tell us a little bit about your role here? Yeah, absolutely. So as the Director of Certification Programs, I actually manage all of our continuing professional development programs, which entails um, all of the logistics regarding scheduling courses and things of that nature, but also managing all of the research that we conduct and making sure that that research is really translated into um, appropriate course materials. Uh, And so why does training industry uh, and you specifically focus on professional development for training managers? Oh, really great question. So training industry has um, traditionally focused on training managers. Um, Our focus is really specifically on the business of learning, um, which means that we're focusing on roles or we've chosen to focus on training managers as a role that has the potential to have the most impact on sort of... um, making sure that training programs really drive business results. Um, The reason why we provide professional development to training managers comes from a need that we saw in the market. So we heard uh, really frequently from training managers that uh, there wasn't really any um, programs out there for them. We also know that as training professionals, we tend to overlook our own professional development in favor of our learners and and putting them first. So we wanted to create something that would support the training manager in um, their own careers. I love what you said about uh, the business of learning and making sure that we impact the business because that's something that I hear a lot when I talk to people uh, for articles that I work on for the website, so that's great. Um, So what are some of the key competencies that training managers need uh, in order to be successful in that role? Wow, so there are actually quite a few. Uh, Training managers wear a number of hats and they are in charge of managing quite complex processes within the training function. Um, So a few. Uh, Training managers need to be able to analyze organizational performance and um, identify how successful various training programs are. They also have to act as a business consultant. So they have to be able to influence and consult with stakeholders to really help identify their needs. They have to be able to think strategically and um, problem solve so they can um, determine what the need is and and kind of what the best solution is. And then they have to be able to manage the development of uh, creative and innovative solutions. So um, kind of a breadth of responsibilities for the training manager. And when you kind of put them all together, it's a huge responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, So how did you identify those competencies? So we conducted some very extensive research to uh, develop our competency model. And I don't want to get too far into the weeds with uh, all of the details, but we conducted a rigorous job analytics study, um, gathering data from all kinds of perspectives. We wanted to gather data from training managers, from their supervisors, their subordinates, their coworkers, the business partners that they interact with. So really trying to gather all of the perspectives that might be able to pro- provide insight into what a training manager needs to be successful. Um, and we did that through observations, focus groups. Um, we did some surveys of all of those kinds of folks. And then we used um, statistics to validate and make sure that these competencies were, lo- were reliable and um, predictive of success in a training manager. So these competencies, are there any that you found in your research and talking to training managers that are more important than, than some of the other competencies? So I, I hesitate to say that one would be more than important than another um, because they are all so important. We did look at importance. So that was one of the things that we gathered from um, all of the folks that responded to our survey, how important the competencies were, as well as how frequently training managers use those competencies. And they were pretty highly related. So we're able to identify which are kind of most important. Um, when we talk about most important competencies, we're talking about integrity, interpersonal skills, 
customer service, um, decision making. Now, we also looked at the key responsibilities of a training manager, and that was a little bit more nuanced in terms of what was most important and what was most frequently used. In fact, they differed. So most important for a training manager is to strategically align business um, goals with training programs. Uh, but it's not the thing that they're doing most frequently. Um, it turns out that what training managers are most frequently doing is managing their resources, which is kind of intuitive, right? Um, so we wanted to make sure that we captured uh, whether it's kind of most critical to the role as well as what they're doing most frequently. Um, the other thing that I would want to say about this is even though some are potentially more important than others, Everything in the training manager competency model is important, and that's why it's there. Uh, the actual difference in terms of how important they are is actually relatively small um, when you look at the averages. So it's good to look at the whole picture. Yes, exactly. Uh, and then what recommendations do you have for training managers uh, who want to develop these competencies to, to be more successful and valuable to their organization? So I would say that seek out those opportunities to um, engage in professional development, learn from your peers, learn from your network, and really identify the skill sets that you, um, that you're kind of, uh, might be having some missing gaps and, and need work in. Um, I'd also say that make sure that if you are going to engage in continuing professional development programs that they're following what we know is best practices in the field. So we want to make sure that they're based on research-based insights and, and evidence. Um, we want to make sure that they include some kind of application so that there is an applied experience as part of the program that's going to allow you to understand how to translate what you're learning to the job. Um, and then wherever it's possible to include reinforcement in your professional development um, programs, that's going to obviously be key to help you continue to apply what you've learned. So definitely practice what you preach as a learning leader. Exactly, yes. Um, so what about people who manage specific types of training programs, like people who manage you know, leadership development or sales training at their companies? Do they have specific competencies or knowledge areas that they also need to focus on? Yeah, great question. So what we found is that the competencies tend to be similar, right? So whether you're managing leadership development or sales training or IT, you're probably going to have really similar kinds of knowledge, skills, abilities that you need to apply in the job. But what is different um, is the kinds of programs that you're going to be using and the principles that underlie them. So when um, we're developing leaders, we're typically going to be using a different set of programs and a different set of principles and models and theories um, than we would be when we're developing sales personnel. And we actually kind of recognized that and we offer certificate programs that align to each of those, those kind of fields and differences. All right. Uh, so you know now we've we've established that we have these competencies that training managers need to be successful, and you know they need this professional development in order to develop them. But sometimes it's easier to advocate for others than it is for ourselves. So I imagine that some training managers, you know, they're really great at advocating for the people at their organizations and helping them get the development opportunities and the resources they need to improve in their roles, but. Maybe they hesitate to ask their own managers to make that same investment in themselves. Um, so what tips do you have to, to help them with that? Yeah, absolutely. That can be a hard ask, right? Because it's very easy to advocate for someone else. You know, I, I see a need in this in my learner. I'm going to advocate for a program that's going to help um, upskill them so that they can perform well in the job. But when it comes to ad being our own kind of advocates and, and trying to um, achieve things in our own careers, it, it can sometimes feel daunting, um, and in particular, depending on who your boss is and what their natural inclination is, it can feel like, how would I even convince that person that this is important? Um, and we do offer guidance on our website, so um, there's a toolkit for approaching your boss about professional development, but some, some tips would be create a need. So you need to make sure that you're explaining to your boss what your skills gap is or what's the business issue that you're hoping to solve with your own professional development. Um, also be really clear about the time that's going to be required for the professional development and the monetary resources or other resources that you're going to need. Um, and then finally explain how you're going to use what you've learned on the job and if you're going to share it with your peers and your coworkers, explain that as well. So you can really create 
create that value statement and make sure that they understand why it's worth investment. Yeah, the, the issue of time for the training manager to take time for themselves is exacerbated a little bit by the fact that I think um, you can, of course, uh, maybe expand upon this, but, uh, you know, that so many people in training are flying solo so much at the time and they're wearing so many hats. There are so many training departments of one. <laughs> yes, fully. Um, and so, you know, in those instances, find time where you can. One of the, one of the I guess, key value propositions of a professional development program is that it's going to help you to understand um, better how to prioritize all of those competing needs. And when you can, take a virtual program, attend a webinar. Um, you know, we offer a ton of virtual programs in various um, periods of time. But find that time, take that time, shift something because it will help you later on to prioritize and free up extra time as you're going. So even if it's difficult to find a week for your own professional development this month, maybe you can find half of a day or a smaller chunk of time and fit it in where you can. Exactly. Fit it where you can, um, even if it's just reading articles on our website, right? I mean, there are so many resources out there and they're, they can be right-sized to what time you have available. Great. All right, That's well, really helpful yeah. guidance. <laughs> Thanks so much, Amy, for joining us today. And just so everyone knows, um, we actually have some additional information on professional development and the training manager competency model on our website, trainingindustry.com. So if you liked what you heard from Amy and you want to learn more, you can find out online. Yeah, and uh, thanks for listening to this inaugural Training Industry Podcast. This is our first podcast, we hope, of many, many more. All right, until next time. Thanks. If you have feedback about this episode or would like to suggest a topic for a future program, email us at info at trainingindustry.com or use the contact us page at trainingindustry.com. Thanks for listening to the Training Industry Podcast.